Is Netflix the king of the streaming services? It might just be when it comes to original TV shows. What's going on guys, I'm Chris, and welcome back to another video. Today I got a little tier list ranking of all the Netflix original TV shows that I have seen. There are tons of popular ones out there that are on my watch list that I'll mention, but these are just the Netflix original shows I personally have watched. Before I get into this though, be sure to hit that like button and comment down below your favorite Netflix original series. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. I mean a lot. I'm less than 300 subscribers away, so please, please help me get there. And if you guys want to watch movies and TV shows with me, including some some of these Netflix originals, you can do so on my Patreon link down below. I'm currently watching through Stranger Things over there and posting commentary tracks. I've got tons lined up for other movies and shows. I'm growing that community over there and your support on Patreon means the world and allows me to continue making these videos. So consider becoming a patron today. Without further ado, let's dive into this tier list. All right, so the tiers I have are S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, and F tier. And I only have 10 of these shows on here. I haven't seen stuff like Narcos or Peaky Blinders, but I have seen some of the mainstays when it comes to Netflix. Netflix shows. Starting off, we've got Ozark. I'm putting this in A tier. Ozark is the closest thing we've had to Breaking Bad since Breaking Bad ended. It's a crime drama done right, and one of my favorite trends in Hollywood is when comedic actors take sort of a dramatic turn, and that's exactly what we see with Jason Bateman here. We saw Sudeikis do it with Ted Lasso. We saw Bill Hader do it with Barry. This falls under that category of comedian turned dramatic actor, but also director. Jason Bateman shines here, and this is a wild ride of a show. It was my pandemic show I started watching in March of 2020, and uh, it's fantastic. I know the ending's divisive, a little too ambiguous for some, but I really dig it. This show has moments that will make your jaw drop. It's well worth the watch, in my opinion. Moving on, though, we've got Wednesday, starring Jenna Ortega, the smash hit from Netflix. I believe we're getting season two next year. I don't think they're going to put it out this year, uh, but it like broke records in terms of viewership in a certain period of time. Look, I liked Wednesday a lot when it came out and I still enjoy the show. The thing is, I just haven't thought about it much and haven't rewatched it since that first week that it dropped. It almost felt like it was a phenomenon and then it kind of came and went in a way. I really enjoyed the build up to the finale, but once we had the big reveal made, it felt a little underwhelming to me. Still really dug it. It was Tim Burton doing his thing, and Jenna Ortega slays, if you will, in the role. I'm going to put it in B tier. I don't love it as much as I did, but still, quality watch and the mystery aspect of the show was my favorite. Next, we've got Outer Banks, p for l baby. This is just an ultimate chill hangout vibe show. I could watch it to the end of time. Every time I talk about Outer Banks, I'm like, I would literally watch this show into the 2050. <laughs> I mean, it just gives me a thrill every time I watch it. I eat up the romantic drama, the teen drama, the treasure hunting nonsense of it all because the show does get cheesy and just way too overdramatic for its own good but I eat up every second of it. It's pure quality entertainment, folks. Put it at the top of B tier. Season three was my least favorite of the bunch. Season two is probably my favorite, and then season one is like classic Outer Banks, so hard to top, but season three gave us some of the most bad moments the entire show has to offer. Topper going full arson. The main villain was just way too over the top. And then of course, bring it on home, John B. I just kind of embrace it for what it is. Plus we're getting season four going after Blackbeard ship. Come on now. Next we got American Vandal. I watched this my freshman year of college with my roommates. There were two seasons. The first one's far superior with Jimmy Tatro and the second one is just uh, forgettable. That's why it got canceled out of two seasons. This is like a true crime mockumentary where like a kid at his high school draws like a certain an object on everyone's cars and then it becomes a whodunit and these two kids are trying to solve the case and they make it into like a documentary series. The second season, something similar happens. It had some charm in the first season, but the idea can't really extend past one season. It felt like a rehash and the first season was, you know, decent enough, but I'm going to go D tier with it. Uh, just because there was some entertainment value with the first season, but all in all, American Vandal got canceled for a reason. It's not the most memorable show. The idea of American Vandal almost works better as like a three-part YouTube series than an actual Netflix series. Moving on though, we've got Stranger Things S tier. This is the king of the Netflix original shows. It's not even close. It's a worldwide phenomenon. It's my favorite show of all time. You guys already knew it was going to be an S tier before I even hit record on this video. It goes without saying. I firmly believe season five will be the best of this show. I think it will be a finale done right because the Duffers have had so much time to perfect it. They also love the show so much. They know what the fans want. They know what they want as the creators of this show. It's going to deliver and I can't wait to keep on talking about it until it eventually arrives sometime in 2025. But Stranger Things is the king. It was always the king. It was always Stranger Things. Moving on, we've got 13 Reasons Why, which I watched for the first time like 2022. I was late to the party, 
but I watched it with my girlfriend who's watched the show a few times with the pretty much it commentary tracks, which make this show 10 times funnier. Season one is like decent dramatic television and it's actually well written. Seasons two, three, and four get crazier and crazier. And by the time you reach season four, there are some insane episodes. There's one where they're out in the woods on the school camping trip and everyone is like tripping balls the entire time. There's a school shooter episode. There's a riot in the streets. 13 Reasons Why evolved so much over the four seasons that it kind of became comedic in a way. <laughs> it's one of those shows where there's just real insane high school drama drama between these kids and Clay Jensen sort of at the center of it all. I'm going C tier with it. It's pure entertainment um, and it's really ridiculous. Moving on, we've got Bridgerton. I am also including Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton story in this, which is like the spin-off prequel season of the show. Um, but I'm a big Bridgerton season two guy because Anthony's probably my favorite Bridgerton. Season one, it's fine. Season three, not terribly excited for it because I'm not crazy about Colin or Penelope, but whenever Benedict or Eloise get their seasons, I'm all in. Regardless, it's not like 100% my thing but I kind of embrace it for what it is because my girlfriend loves it so much. It's like period piece romance. Um, season one, <laughs> there's a lot of explicit content to say the least. Season two tones it back a little bit, which I appreciated. I would say in the grand scheme of things, I'll go B tier with Bridgerton, like right in the middle. I prefer Outer Banks, but I'd take Bridgerton over Wednesday just because for me personally, Bridgerton is almost on a loop. My girlfriend watches it constantly. She reads the books, so I'm very inundated with the world of Bridgerton 24-7 to the point of me almost subconsciously starting to like the show more than I originally might even have liked it, so it's B tier. I'm curious to see how they handle season three, but more importantly, I want to see what they do for season four and five. I hope it's Benedict and Eloise and then I'll be set for enjoying the next two seasons, and you never know. Uh, season three could surprise with Colin and Penelope, but next we've got Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai never dies, baby. This is A tier, top of A tier for me. I actually have grown to love the world of Cobra Kai almost more than the original Karate Kid film, which might be blasphemous to some of you, but they take what matters most in those Karate Kid films, which is like the spirit of Mr. Miyagi, and then of course Daniel and Johnny, and they flesh out those characters so, so much. It's almost like there's more of an emphasis on Johnny Lawrence and his redemption arc during Cobra Kai, and I really appreciate that because I love a good turnaround story, and that's what Cobra Kai provides. Also, so it gives us a new generation of karate kids, essentially, that are more relatable, does a good job of handling the legacy characters and the new generation of characters, but every little character from that original trilogy or reference comes back in Cobra Kai because the creators of Cobra Kai care so deeply about that original trilogy and paying respect to it. This is how you do a legacy sequel. It continues to get more epic and cheesy, but it never loses its identity. Cobra Kai knows it's a cheesy thing inherently, just like the original films can be, but it balances the heartfelt moments and the serious moments with those over-the-top fight scenes where Terry Silver's fighting Chosen with daggers and a samurai sword. It's awesome, badass, over-the-top fun, and I eat up every second of it. I cannot wait to see how the show ends with season six. Then we've got Netflix's You. This show has kind of regressed for me. When I first watched season one, I was hooked. I went right into season two, I was hooked. Then I had to wait for season three. I thought season three could have been a nice ending point because it started to get a little repetitive and then season four rolls around and I'm like, man, the first half of this season was kind of a drag. There's a big twist that recontextualizes everything leading up to that point. And I was like, okay, I can get on board a little bit more. But season four to me still easily the least memorable of the bunch. And it does feel a little tired at this point. Like how long can we drag out this story with Joe? I don't see how he makes it out alive in season five. I don't even know how there is a season five, but we made it this far. This might be crazy to say, but I'm kind of tempted to put this in C tier. Like I'm gonna go top of C tier again. Quality entertainment. I think seasons one and two where the show is really in stride. Three was all right, and four just hasn't really stuck with me the more I think about it. So I wish I could put you higher. In fact, if you asked me about you in 2021, I'm probably going B tier, maybe even A tier, but it's regressed for me. Season four just didn't really click like I wanted it to, and I'm curious to see how they can continue in season five. I'll be sat, there's no denying that, but we'll just have to see how it all turns out. But the last one on this list is Squid Game. We're getting season two at some point. I think this year maybe, um, but the first time I watched this, I thought that it was just gonna be a one and done type deal. I think the whole world did, but it became this global hit. I mean, outperformed anyone's expectations. I would say Squid Game is mm, back of B tier. Um, I really enjoyed the journey. I felt it to be a little unsatisfying with the conclusion when we sort of find out who was behind everything. And there are moments where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm on the edge of my seat. And they had these great cliffhanger endings. Like they had that binge model down. They, they really crafted a show that became a phenomenon. You know, it wasn't 
too predictable at first because it subverts expectations at the end of episode one with everyone like leaving the squid game for a bit and then going back. At some point in the show that happens at least, but I admire this. It takes big risks. There's one episode, I think it's the sixth episode, that's like truly heartbreaking stuff. You're like so invested and you're just like, oh my gosh, on the edge of your seat, you could almost throw up from how tense it is. But I felt the finale didn't fumble the bag necessarily, but kind of went out with a bit of a whimper. of was like, huh, that's how we're going to wrap up this show. Curious to see if they can recapture the, you know, acclaim of season one and the worldwide buzz of season one in this new season. I don't know if you can replicate that, but regardless, I'll be tuned in and I'm really curious to see how they continue this story. But that's going to do it for my tier list ranking of all these Netflix original shows that I've seen. I haven't seen stuff like Narcos or Peaky Blinders, and there's tons of Netflix shows out there. In fact, there's a lot of TV shows in general that I just haven't seen, but I think we all can say that because it's hard to watch every popular TV show out there because TV is a commitment. That's just a fact. But let me know in the comments down below your favorite Netflix original shows, and of course, hit that like button, subscribe to that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel, but I am so, so close, so anything would mean a lot. And if you guys want to watch Stranger Things with me right now, you can do so on Patreon. I'm dropping weekly commentary tracks over there, and I'll be doing other movies and shows as well. Your support on Patreon would mean the absolute world as it can allow me to continue making these videos here on YouTube. But that's going to do it for another tier list video. We're already in March tomorrow. Time's flying. But thank you guys, as always, for watching. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>